Yo, 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 I got a tank tier list for you guys for 10.1.5 of what I think is going to be meta for Mythic Plus. I want to mention that every single tank is solid right now. We've got some of the best tank balancing I have ever seen in WoW. And unless you're pushing higher in Mythics, like plus 25 and up, play whatever you want and enjoy. I've gotten a chance to play every single tank right now in Mythic Plus, some testing on the PTR, and I've gotten my main prop paladin to around 2,500 IO. Uh, pushing some plus 20s and a couple other already past KSM. Uh, this should be a super fun video. Let me know what you think down below or if you have any questions, and I hope you're excited for 10.1.5. Uh, to explain the tier list here, we've got S being the highest rank here, uh, God tier. A is awesome, slightly below that, just maybe some more weaknesses than S tier. B is pretty much good all around. You can play in most types of content, just lacks some kind of either defensively or offensively compared to these other tanks. C is obviously mad. They need some kind of tuning or changing to bring it up to par with these other ones. And then D, oh my God, rework something. Something needs to change. Let's jump right into it. To kick things off, I'm going to go with Guardian Druid S tier. 100%, they are one of the best tanks in the game right now. Probably tied with one other tank, which I'm sure you could guess. But if you guys have looked at Raider IO at all or, or you know, Warcraft logs, you will see that, okay? Uh, we've seen it this season. Guardian is absolutely busted. A majority of the dungeons deal a lot of physical damage, and Guardians deal with it so freaking well. They've got so much damage mitigation with Iron Fur and Thorns of Iron for physical damage. They've got Bark Skin, Survival Instincts, Incarn. Their tier set helps with self healing, uh, increases their damage and HP. You literally feel like a freaking beast. You bring Mark of the Wild, which is dope. You've got a Battle Res, which is really nice. You got Incap War, Knockback with Typhoon if talented, and Ursula's Vortex too, uh, which is great for a lot of mobs uh, because there's others. I mean, there's a ton of mobs that have random targeting that focus on your DPS of healers or somebody like that. Helps them to have them locked down and can't tell you how many DPSs or, uh, you know, healers I've saved, especially in under rot this season. It's crazy. Uh, Guardian does solid AOE damage and single target, and not to mention the talent changes that are coming up here is going to make them even better, okay? Uh, we're no longer going to have to sacrifice Maul for raise to lose single target damage, so we'll have Maul for single target and raise for AOE. We'll still have two charges of Frenzied Regen, but now it's going to increase our healing by 150% based on missing health, which is just insane uh they buff thrash too which to have an additional stack so this is good damage overall for single target and aoe uh not to mention they really have redesigned a lot of the talent tree that just makes it much more rewarding to pick certain things um they move the nodes a little bit it's really nice i'm excited to see what they're going to do with this this specialization in 10.1.5 once we actually get some more testing out mythic plus some of the best players to you know push these dungeons mdi great push all that stuff it's going to be cool to see. But if you look at Raider.io Raider right now, I'm telling you, they have completed some of the top keys right there with our second tank, which I'm going to mention now, Vengeance Demon Hunter, okay? Vengeance Demon Hunter, I think, is the best tank in the game right now, if not tied. I think these guys might be tied, but in 10.1.5, I could see this one rising up. Um, Guardian Druid being number one. But Vengeance Demon Hunter is phenomenal. Their fourth set is incredibly insane with Fiery Brand. Helps with your damage mitigation. Also helps with your damage output for single target and AOE. You have Sigil of Silence for grouping mobs together or for just a mass interrupt. You have, have Imprison for Incorporeal, which I just want to highlight too. It's really nice to have an instant cast CC for that. There's some, a lot, every class can deal with Incorporeals now, but not every one of them has to like have an instant cast. They have to like cast something. It's nice to have a, uh, just one instant cast Imprison a mob. Either if there's just one that spawns, you can deal with that yourself. Especially if you're pugging, guys. I can't tell you many times. I, what I do is 99% of pugging. Uh, it's nice to be able to just deal with the incorporeal myself or to deal with one of them and you know the dps or healers can deal with the other one uh and almost every single time especially if there's a healing check or a dps check it's just nice to have uh you have an aoe stun which is really nice you've got chaos brand to debuff all the targets to increase magical damage of your group by five percent you've got great physical damage mitigation and magical damage and mitigation just passively it's great uh you can deal with a lot you can deal out a lot of damage um both to bosses and mobs so they're really good for fortified keys but also really good for tyrannical they do probably the best single target damage in the game for tanks uh which i absolutely love they've got two incredible builds right now too to push in high content one of them being the frailty build which is just fantastic all around both with damage and survivability and it's it has incredible self-healing i really love it it's probably my favorite of the two it's got it's just really interactive i i, I thoroughly love it i think it's probably the best one but the second one which is now is playing a lot is feed the demon build uh, it's got a cheat death in it, so it's really helpful if you make mis uh, make mistakes. It's way less punishing, and you basically have demon spikes up all the time, so you're just passively more tanky. Uh, so if you're new to the specialization, you really don't know how to like kind of kite mobs into them until you build up your damage mitigation with the frailty build. I do I do suggest using that, so check out his video. It's a really good video. But both of them are really fun and viable. This spec has been insane in 10.1, and it's going to carry over in 10.1.5 without a doubt. Next up, we got Prop Paladin. I'm going to put an A tier if not low S tier, 
Uh, I think they are still absolutely phenomenal, but with Guardi with Vengeance Demon Hunter just rising up even more, especially with the dungeon nerfs, um, and Guardian Druid getting these incredible buffs, I think that they beat out Prop Paladin. But, uh, you know, they're not getting any changes in 10.1.5, but that doesn't mean they're not going to be incredible. They even received nerfs at the beginning of Season 2, uh, but that hasn't stopped them. They still completed some of the top, top keys in the game, and you can see that in Raider IO. They're still, I, I mean, probably for every, like, three or... You know, two or three, uh, you know, Vengeance Demon Hunter or Guardian Druid, you see a Prop Paladin. I think that's because of the utility they bring, okay? They've got Blessing Protection to help deal with physical damage. They've got Lay on Hands. Their off heals are incredible, even after the nerfs. Blessing of Sacrifice uh, to deal with some damage to, in coming to a single target. And you have, it's su on such a low cooldown. You should be using that shit if you're not. You have an AoE inter Interrupt with Divine Tool. This is great for grouping mobs together or just a really large pull. You got two regular Interrupts, too, with, you know, Avenger Shield and Rebuke, uh, it, which is incredible. And you're getting Avenger Shield back all the time. You're literally an absolutely carry unit. And I am not kidding. This is, there's a reason why. Why I have made this uh, this specialization back in Shadowlands and why I'm doing it now, it is fantastic for pugging, which is, like I said, a majority of the keys that I'm doing. It's just really helpful. I, I love being able to maybe solely solo carry a group. I did a Bracken Eye. I think it was like a plus 17 the other day. Uh, all three of my DPS, I don't know why they're doing plus 17 in my, but they just didn't know what to interrupt. They did no idea. They weren't paying attention to boss mechanics, but interrupts were the biggest thing. I think yeah, there was one other guy that had an interrupt in the group. Uh, we had a priest healer, but I had like 60 some interrupts because they weren't interrupting anything. And the healer said, you know, like if you weren't in this group, I would have left this group 100%. He was trying to help out the DPS to tell them what to interrupt. They just didn't give a shit. So I'm telling you, you can carry groups. I did it in a plus 17. You can even do it in higher keys if you're, you know, better player than me, which isn't even hard. <laughs> um, their damage isn't anything insane. Uh, it's on the lower end, especially compared to Vengeance, De uh, Vengeance Demon Hunter and Guardian Druid, uh, if those are played well. Uh, but they have a lot. They bring a lot to the table with, the, you know, defensively. They've got Divine Shield for really big pulls or in tough scenarios. Just an, It's in mass AoE taunt. Love that shit. Uh, really makes up for it. Uh, they are by far one of the best tanks in 10.1. That's going to stay for 10.1.5 for sure. Um, not to mention, guys, they're incredibly easy uh, and forgiving to pick up if you're new. Uh, which I absolutely love for new players. I highly recommend them to most people, but it has a really high skill ceiling if you want to improve and get better. It, I promise you there's a, a really high skill ceiling for Prop Paladin, um, and you'll see that if you push any higher keys. But if you can execute it well, it is it is worth it. It is so much freaking fun. Uh, okay, next up we got Brewmaster Monk. I'm going to put actually next here to Prop Paladin. I do think Prop Paladin is better than Brewmaster Monk. Uh, just the utility they bring, but Brewmaster is just all around a great tank. Okay, they've got Ring of Peace, you've got Leg Sweep, you've got Paralysis for Incorporeal. You have, they, they, you literally have so much mobility. You, um, it, it's actually insane. I think you're the most mobile tank in the game with you know Roll, Tiger's Lust, which also helps for entangling with yourself or someone else. Uh, you have Transcendence if you need it. Uh, they, they excel at doing AOE damage and are fantastic for one-shotting mechanics with Stagger. Uh, there are less of one-shotting mechanics this season than there was previously, um, but I I think that's why they bring them slightly down on this list. Uh, but they just do, and they don't bring the same utility I think as some of these other tanks. Uh, but they do really well just around everything, you know. I think what brings them down too is just they don't bring the same physical damage uh, mitigation um, or. Um, uh, magic magical damage mitigation they're just really solid overall but they don't really excel in in one area and i think that's where they they lack honestly uh they also are incredibly hard to pick up um if you're new to the game i know a lot of people have you know mentioned in the comments before they're not that hard they're not that difficult but you guys you literally as a brewmaster monk you have probably the most keybinds in the entire game and that can be incredibly overwhelming especially if you're new to the game they are not as easy to pick up as, you know, Guardian Druid or freaking or Prop Paladin or Blood DK. Oh my god, or Prop Warrior. You just keep shield block up the whole time, stay in defensive stance. You, like, hardly ever die. They are much harder than that. But if you take the time to learn them and play them well, you will not regret it. They are one of the best tanks. They are very well-rounded. They have been that way for a really long time. They are the least played tank um, historically. They are this season as well as long and last season. Even with all the good changes they made with them and when they were doing incredible damage. Monks are just the least cl played class in the game, but they're really good. They're solid overall, just don't excel, really excel in any area right now. They've just received too many nerfs to their damage too, which I really hope they increase. Uh, but in 10.1.5, they are getting a fortified brew buff, 5% buff. Uh, this is going to help with the, you know heal or it'd be more tanky, so it's going to be great. Uh, uh, a tier, for sure. Uh, next up, we got Prop Warrior, guys. I think they are so freaking good. Um, I actually am going to put them, I'm going to put them in A tier, okay? Um, 
they're not actually that much different than season one, even after the nerfs. They're incredibles. And you guys remember how, uh, if you guys play season one, they were incredible, guys. I'm not kidding. I main Prot Warrior. It was so much fun. Pushing the Keystone Hero, doing pug groups. Your damage was crazy. You took you could take so many hits from almost everything, except for the Jade Serpent boss. Oh my freaking God, that thing was hell. But it was just super fun, guys. They're easy to pick up. They're very forgiving, uh, especially if you're a new player. They bring Battle Shout, which is goaded for heavy physical damage groups. You've got great mobility. You've got tons of defensive CDs. you got an AoE taunt. you got two group stuns with Shockwave and in-cap shot. you got Storm Bolt for single target if single target stun. you got Intervene. If you know a single target's about to take a lot of damage, you can intervene them. Uh, they deal with magic damage dec decently well. Not as good as some of the other, other tanks, you know, Vengeance Demon Hunter or Blood DK, but really pretty damn well. But... Their physical damage mitigation is where they really shine when you have constant shield block up time and you've got shield wall. It's crazy, guys. They've got two stances to switch between uh, depending on what you need. Defensively, uh, you can do a defense stance to increase your tankiness and health. Uh, battle stance to increase your damage output, which is really nice. Uh, this tank is just really good all around. And this season's physical damage mobs, uh, they're just, they hit really freaking hard. And holy shit, Prot does so well. So while they might be out lower on this, this tier list, I promise you they are really good. If you want to play Prot Warrior, do it. Um, the two set looks really good too. It just increases how much AOE damage you can do while also buffing your tankiness with last stand. Uh, it's a huge damage increase. They're phenomenal in Mythic Plus for that. I think that's why they shine better in Mythic Plus than they do in Raid. Um, this spec was insane in Season 1. Definitely going to be... It's, it's, it's insane in Season 2. It's going to carry on to 10.1.5. Great time to be a tank if you love Prot Warrior. I promise you, play them. You won't regret it. Uh, Blood DK. Guys, I'm going to put in high B tier, if not right below Prot Warrior. There's a few reason, reasons for this, and I'll get to that in just a sec. AMS, uh, which is great for dealing with magic damage, anti-magic shield, really good. You got Death Grip, uh, which is incredibly helpful for Mythic Plus in every single dungeon. You got A-Bomb Limb, same thing. Knockback Immunity with Death's Advance, which is really good for a lot of these bosses. I'm speaking of Natharian's Lair for the last one where he does damage if he moves. Having Death's Advance where you literally don't move at all is... <laughs> <laughs> just so freaking good you got amz which is really helpful in these situations um uh, especially i think it does more it does is better in raid usually than mythic plus but it is nice to have they deal with magic damage pretty damn well probably deal with magic damage maybe the best out of any other tank um which is really nice maybe up there with vengeance demon hunter which i really like um and this tank is just incredibly forgiving to play uh and not only that but you will 100 percent out heal your healers almost uh, every single key I, I have it's they're so much fun i played them a ton in season one got them to ksm i was doing plus 15s plus 16s played them a lot in shadowlands when they were freaking insane i missed that a little bit and i hope they get some buffs here soon but uh they're really good uh they you feel insane with all the self-healing you have you basically can solo so much shit you feel invincible and you've got a cheat death with, with purgatory it's so freaking good uh it's nice to have a control undead for incorporeal now too which i really like um, there's been two glaring issues with the Blood DK, though, in 10.1. Um, and those being damage output they were doing and physical damage mitigation. Uh, they have significantly buffed Blood DK's damage, uh, which is what they needed without a doubt, especially for single target. They were far behind all these other tanks. They have buffed their damage twice now significantly. Their damage is no longer the issue, and that is not why I'm putting them in B at all. I promise you they're solid tanks, okay? But... This season, for whatever reason, has so much physical damage to, to every single tank, and Blood DK pro does worse than every other tank in that area. They don't do bad, per se, necessarily, but they do worse than uh, worse than all these other tanks. They just physical damage, if they could buff that somehow to deal with it, deal with it better, some kind of mitigation for that, they would rise up in this so freaking fast. I hope they do, because I seriously miss my Blood DK being OP as shit back in Shadowlands. It was so much fun. Um... So I hope they do. Uh, I, I think they're a great tank. I am not trying to diss anybody. I know people in the comments previously mentioned some things about you know them not being uh, me bragging on Blood DK. I'm not. I'm just telling you what's going to be better and what's not uh, based on my opinion, Warcraft logs, some testing in PTR, uh, Raider IO, all that stuff. This tank is going to be incredible, especially if you're just planning on doing you know up to plus 20s, up to plus 21s, 22s. They're amazing. Play the Blood DK. If you love them, do it. I'm going to be playing Bl Blood DK next season or, or 10.1.5, 100%. Um, but stacking it up against these other tanks, they do fall behind in a lot of areas. So that, with that said, this is where I think the end it goes. I think you got, you know, Vengeance Demon Hunter, Guardian, looking at the best tanks. You got Prop Paladin, still phenomenal. Just falling a little bit behind these two tanks right now, especially 10.1.5. Ruby Raster next, Prop Warrior there, and then um, Blood Decay at the end. But again, solid. All these tanks, play whatever you want, play whatever you enjoy.
thank you guys so, so much for watching. Uh, what are you guys going to be playing at 10.1.5? I'll be for sure playing Guardian Druid, Blood Decay, and I think some Prot Warrior. Uh, I missed my warrior from last season for sure. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to check me out on Twitch where I'm streaming WoW and Diablo 4 lately um, for the mostly. I'm um, sorry for my voice in this video. I lost my voice, been a super busy day. So I will catch you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching again. Peace.